Apple have just released a brand new update for GarageBand on Mac. And let me tell you, it is glorious. But what exactly has been added in GarageBand version 10.4.1? Let's dive in. GarageBand's look has been given a fresh new lick of paint in this update. Out are the faux wood panels at the sides of the GarageBand window and skeuomorphic instrument icons. In is a more flat, two-dimensional design philosophy for buttons, icons and controls, bringing them in line with the visual theme introduced in macOS Big Sur. Track header instrument icons now adopt this new look when you open new tracks, but if you prefer the older, more realistic instrument designs, you can just right or control click on the track header and then select Assign Track Icon. Here you can pick and choose from all of the new style instrument icons, as well as all of the icons that were in the previous version. Other neat little touches include the redesign of the musical type and keyboard, and changes to how instruments and drummers are displayed in the library pane. Very cool, though I did like the drummer's wee personal autographs that were in the older version. Don't worry Kyle, we still love you pal. Interestingly, this GUI redesign only came to GarageBand. Logic Pro was updated at the same time and retained the exact same interface as the previous version. So for the first time in seven years, there is a markedly different look to the two programs. While I can imagine that this redesign will be quite polarising, and do feel free to tell me just how much you hate it down in the comments, I really like it, and it does tie in with some of the changes Apple made to the design of GarageBand for iOS recently too. The massive change in GUI may lead you to believe that GarageBand for Mac has received a dramatic update overall, but when it comes to features, this isn't really the case. Piano Roll, Loop Browser, Quantization, Automation, Plugins, everything is located in exactly the same place as the previous version of GarageBand, and it all works in exactly the same way too with a couple of notable exceptions. If you right click or control click on your track header, you'll see in this menu the option to assign track color. That's right, you can now change the colors of your regions in GarageBand. While I get this may seem like a pretty superficial update on the face of it, changing the color of a track's regions also changes the color of the new style track icons. This means from an organisational standpoint, you can now group track types together by colour, which I think will actually be a really useful feature to have, especially in larger projects. A feature that has actually been removed in this update is the media browser. In the previous version of GarageBand, it lived up in the top right next to the loop browser and notepad. In GarageBand 10.4.1, you'll notice that it has completely vanished. This seems to be a conscious omission on Apple's part, as the feature is still present in the newly updated Logic Pro. So now, according to Apple's official documentation, you need to drag and drop any media files directly from Finder into your project timeline. You were able to import stuff to your projects this way previously, now it's the only way so bear that in mind. Finally, if you do decide to update to macOS Big Sur and this new version of GarageBand, you may see a wee box pop up during installation asking if you'd like to use existing key commands or switch to a new optimized set. Unfortunately, this appears to just be a bug. Whichever option you choose will result in only the pre-existing key commands being available and the key commands presets menu it mentions just isn't there. 
It is present in Logic Pro, however. So, yeah, as I said, it looks like a bug. Hopefully, Apple will get it squashed soon. Far and away, the best part of this new update is the huge amount of new sounds that have been added. All of the instruments, loops, and drum kits from the last year's worth of GarageBand for iOS sound pack updates have been added here. So that's the content from the Prismatica, Skyline Heat, Vision and Verse, and Keyboard Collection packs. Phew! All in all, Apple have added 1,800 loops, 119 new instrument patches, and 50 drum kits. The iOS sound library packs have been nothing short of brilliant this year, and it's great to see all of that stellar content make its way into GarageBand for Mac. All right, here's a taste of the sounds you'll be getting your hands on in this new update. are some incredible new sounds here, with the Prismatica loops and keyboard patches from the keyboard collection sticking out as particular highlights for me. After years of being left out in the cold, it looks like we can finally say that the future is bright for GarageBand users on Mac. However, before diving into all that fresh, shiny new stuff, there are a few things you need to know before hitting the update button. Give this video a click to find out more. Take care of yourself. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.